Good morning, everybody. Patty in here. Hang on just a second. Hey, you know what? I think I need a little fresh coffee. Wait a minute. Hope you're having yours with me. <laughs> ah. Okay, anyway, let me take a real quick sip. And today I've got something really fun to show you, but you have to be willing to put in the extra time and effort to, for, to, to do this. But once you do it a few times, you are going to be so happy to have learned. Um, let me show you up at Cricut Design Space what I'm talking about. Okay, here's Minnie Mouse. I found an image of her on um, Google. And of course, you must know that we can only use these kind of things for personal use. You cannot ever, ever, ever sell them. But just for personal use, they're kind of fun to make. So what I did today was I went into Inkscape. Now don't let Inkscape scare you when I show you what it looks like. Because all of these buttons over here, you're not going to have to use all of that stuff. And if you get the exact same image I have and work on it step by step by step by step with me, uh, you'll start to understand the process. So, look down here at my desk for just a second, and what I've already done is I did uh, cut mini out of cardstock. I'm going to do the rest of the stuff out of vinyl, just regular vinyl, but I didn't want to use a whole slew of my cardstock for the just the backing of this, so I'm just going to do it with cardstock. Isn't she cute? Can you tell? <laughs> She's going to be pretty big. I originally cut her in half so that I could make her even larger, but then I thought, no, just for this sample that I'm making here, it's it's not for anything, it's just a sample. I don't want to use up all of my materials. So anyway, speaking of materials, that's why I like you guys to use my affiliate links, and I really, really appreciate it because it helps keep this YouTube channel going. Okay, so on we go. Okay, I already uh, cut out of white vinyl this part, the hands and those things. I did make sure that I used my uh, Cricut paper that is older and not really, really sticky because I don't want it to take off parts of the cardstock as I go. There we go. I'm just going to burnish it lightly. I'm not sure how hard I need to burnish it to get it to stick. It looks like not very hard and it's sticking. And like I said, I don't want to peel off any of my cardstock. I should turn this upside down, I guess. I probably hear you guys yelling, turn it upside down, it'll work better. All right. was a little part that got messed up on my initial cut but you can see how she's starting to look already okay let's look up at Cricut Design Space so I've done the white the next color I have to do is well actually it's like a silvery color it's going to go right here for her it's going to go right here where her microphone is so I'll go cut that out and then I'll, I'll skip the black because that's what I've already done in cardstock and I'll go on to the pink, which is her little teeny tiny tongue. So I'm going to do the gray and then the pink, and I'll be back. So I've already cut Minnie's face, her uh, mouth, and the microphone. So I'm going to put those on now. And maybe you're asking, could I do this in heat transfer vinyl? Absolutely. I did not do it in that because I don't have that many colors and I'm not sure that this face color is going to look great for many but it'll have to do. Okay, there we go for that. Now for the microphone. Let's see I need to look up here at my diagram. I can't really. I think I'll just put her mouth in. And I'll wait to the microphone when I can get back and look at the image again. I could look at it in Inkscape, I guess. 
Come on. There you go. Put our little mouth in. Just like that. Perfect. And I could even put cut another piece of this cardstock to back it with so it's stronger. Now when I put the other piece on here, the arm won't be as bad. Or I could even cut chipboard because we can do that with our Explore Airs twos or ones, the first one. Sure, I think that just goes like that. So I wonder if I can just peel it off of here and, yep, I can. Just stick it on there. There we go. Okay, let's look up at Cricut Design Space and see what's next. So this is done. The next thing I have to do, oh, there's a little gold piece, yeah. And then the green, that's the leaves of the strawberries. Her dress. Um, the bow and her shoes and then what is that the strawberries all right so the first thing I'm going to do now I can tell what's already been done right because there's check marks beside it it doesn't realize I did this already because I restarted it but see how there's a check mark there that's done check mark there that is done so now I'm ready to go to this which is the gold Look how cute she's turning out. So far, she's looking great, isn't she? Love her. Okay, be right back. Okay, I've added a few more things, and now I'm working on her shoes and a little bit of the microphone. And unfortunately, I can't see where the cuts are so that I can save some of this glitter. Do you ever have the case of when you try to be frugal that you ruin something because you're trying to be so cheap? <laughs> uh, that's probably what I'm doing here. Hope oh, not. Can't tell. I've heard of people saying to use uh this must be to use um, baby powder or something to help you know. See, it looks like there's supposed to be a cut there. Huh? Is that correct? Okay, yay, I did it. All right, now, I'm going to get my transfer paper and just do her bow first. So I think I left my squeegee. See if that'll work well enough. It may be hard to use this really old transfer paper for this. Yeah, see it's not not working. I'm gonna go get a newer piece of transfer tape. Okay, since this piece is a lot newer, I'm gonna have to be careful that it doesn't mess up my cardstock. I was over there. I should have looked for my A lot of times they say there's that one strong transfer tape that you should use for glitter and that's probably right now when I should be using that but I'm just trying to use the regular probably almost put it on without the sticker paper or the transfer paper. Let's see now, where does this piece go? This looks like this would go up here. Like that. 
And this piece goes. I'm not sure where those two pieces go. I'll have to look at those in a little bit. So here's what she looks like so far. And let's continue on at Cricut Design Space. So let's see. I've just done this. So I have not done this yet. And this is the, whoops, the strawberries, I believe. Yeah, so I'm going to make those out of red. So I'll do the strawberries. I've already done the stems. They're here. And that's almost it. So I'll be back. Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Hang on just a second. <clears throat> okay, so this is what we're going to learn how to do today. And you need to be patient and just follow along step by step. You may not want a mini mouse, but I suggest that you do this exactly with me. And then after you get comfortable doing this, you can branch out and choose any image you want to on the internet. So, the first thing that I recommend is the type of image that you get. If you look at this one right here, it's very clear. There's no shading. It's a very clear image, and I've asked you to download this if you can. Now, what I do is I, right, I click on this to make it as large as it can be, and then I right-click on it, and I say Save Picture As, and then I just saved it like it was. It's named Mickey Singing, and it's a GIF, G-I-F. That's fine. And I save it in my downloads. It's going to say I already have it because I do. <laughs> so I'm going to replace it. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> and another video, I'll show you how to go about finding good images. But the most important thing is nice black lines. Um, it's kind of like it, it is clip art. There's not any shading. That makes it for the easiest. Okay. So let's see, the other thing I asked you to do was to go ahead and download Inkscape. Go to inkscape.org, and here's where you download it. And then follow the instructions there. Once that's downloaded, we can open up Inkscape. Okay, here's the one that I did already, and I do have another one ready to go. Now don't let this program scare you. Oh, let me get rid of that. Don't let this program scare you at all. There are a bazillion buttons here, right? But you're not going to have to use many of them at all. So just relax and follow along step by step. <clears throat> so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come up here to File, click on that, and say Import. You can also go to File and Open. That will just open a new version of, or a new instance of Inkscape. If you just go to Import, it'll import it right into this currently open one. So I'm going to go to Import, and I'm going to my Downloads folder because that's where I put mm, Singing Mini. Mini Singing, there she is. So I'm going to open that. And I'm going to leave this box just as it is and just say OK. So there's Mini. And one thing that's nice about Inkscape is if you want to make her smaller, all you have to do is hit the minus key on your keyboard, and that makes it smaller. Or the plus key right up there, you know, by the backspace key, and that makes it larger. So this is the first thing you're going to do. You're going to come up here to Path, Trace, Bitmap. And since this is a color image, I'm not going to look up here at the top stuff. I'm not interested in that. I'm going to come down here where it says Multiple Scans, and I'm going to click on Color. I'm going to uncheck Smooth, and I'm going to make sure that Stack Scans is checked, and Remove Background is checked, and Live Preview is checked. So there's a live preview of what we're going to get. 
Now right now it's set to doing eight scans. You would change the number of scans based on about how many colors there are in your image. So for example, if I change this way down, look. <clears throat> if it's only going to do color, two colors, that's all it's going to show. Three colors, still not enough. Four, nope. Five, no. Six, getting close, maybe. So probably six or seven. I can't really tell that much difference between them. Oh, wait. No, I want to go all the way up to 9. Notice the microphone right here. When I go up to 9, see when I'm at 8, it's a pinky color. I want it to be the real color that it is. So 9 is what works. So then all I do is I come over here and I hit OK. When I hit go OK, it's going to execute the trace. As you can see, it says there. It's not going to look like anything happens, but it does. So I'm going to say OK. And did you notice how the light came back on on the OK button once it was done? Watch, when I click on it, well now that I've done it, it comes on very quickly. But if I hadn't already done it, it would first turn gray and then come back on. And what I know when my mouse is over it and it comes back on, it's done. So I can X out this box. OK. So I'm going to click over here off of this thing that I had highlighted. Then I'm going to come over and click on it again. And I'm going to drag, hold my mouse key down, my left key, and drag this thing over to the right. The one on top is the one I'm going to use. The one that was underneath, I'm going to make it smaller. Now if I hold down my control key, it makes it so it won't get wonky. I'm just going to make it smaller and put it up he over here so I know what my mini is supposed to look like. And this is my working mini over here. Okay. So the next thing you need to do is you're going to come up here to Object and Ungroup. So you know what that kind of does. It has a bunch of layers over here and it ungroups them. Now here comes an important part. So I'm going to click off of it and then click back on it and it's going to let me start dragging some images away or some layers. I'm going to hit the plus key on my keyboard so I can get in closer and I'm going to look at these things. Now this first black one that I get off looks great. What I'm looking for is to make sure that the lines are complete and solid. Okay, this looks really good right here, so I'm going to probably use that one. I'll move it over to the side. This one would not work because look how it's all colored in, so I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of it. Same thing with this one, delete. Whoops. Okay, this one looks pretty good. Well, let's compare these two. Yeah, I actually think this one might look a little bit better. Look at the little dots in the strawberry. I just, this one seems like it might just have a little bit more detail. And see how the shoe right here, it goes the whole way around, where here it doesn't. And so, so now I've chosen this one. I'm going to click on the black one and hit my delete key. So this is my best one so far. I'm going to bring out another one. No, see how things are colored in black? I don't want that one. Oops. This one too has things that are just blackened in. Don't want it. Nope. And nope. Okay, so I am left with this one that I like the best. So the first thing I'm going to do, since it's not the black one, is I'm going to make it be the black one. So I'm just going to come all the way down here where the color swatches are, come way over to the left and hit the very last one and it turns it black. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do in case I make a mistake is I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say duplicate. And now I have two of them. I'm going to just put this one way over there and hide her. Come back over here. 
And then I'm going to use my minus key again so I can get out a little bit. All right. So once again, this is my working mini, and this is the one that I'm kind of copying. So I usually start at the top <coughs> and work my way down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unclick so nothing is selected, and I'm going to choose the color I want to use for her bow. So I can choose any color I like down here. I'll try this pink one right here. Then I come over to the paint bucket and click on it. And then I come back up here to the bow and click, click, click. I click everything that's pink. Oh, oh, I made a mistake there. I don't want that one. I can either come up here and go to undo, or notice I could hit the control and the Z. But I come up to edit and undo. I want that spot right there. All right, is there anything else that's the same color of pink? Well, I'm going to get hit my plus key and go in a little closer. So it looks like the shoes are the same color. thing is, I don't really like that pink. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to scroll way over here because I'll find some more pinks I might like better. Okay. Yeah, I like that pink better. So I'm going to just change these to this pink. But maybe that's a little too dark because of the strawberries. Maybe I'll try this one. <laughs> All right, that looks good. And then I'm going to come and I think I will click on her shoes. Now notice not all of her shoe got done. So I'm going to hit the plus key again on my keyboard, which is right to the left of the backspace key so I can get in here and click there with the pink and there and there and some of this stuff doesn't matter if it doesn't get covered in like that little bit right there it's not really that important so now what I need to do is this I think I'm going to hit the minus key now and go back out I think I have all of the pink that I want for this part. Maybe I made the microphone the same pink, so I'll do that too. And see, I tried to get that part right there, but I couldn't, so I need to hit the plus key so I can get in better and see it and get my paint bucket in there, and then hit the minus key again to go out. All right, so far so good. Now what I need to do is I want to union these together. And union is just like weld. And I'll show you how you'll be able to tell that. So the next thing I need to do, I've got this paint bucket attached to my mouse. I don't want that right now. I want to come up here to the selection tool, select and transform tool. Click on that. So those are the two tools basically you'll be using. This one right here, the select tool, and the paint bucket tool. So we're going back to the select tool. Notice something over here is selected. I don't want that to be, so I'm just going to hit anywhere on my canvas to deselect it. And now what I'm going to do, and what I'd like you to do with nothing selected, is click on Minnie's ear and drag that part away. Do you see how you're just left with the things that you made turn pink? That's exactly what you want. So you're going to draw a box around them just like we do in design space and then you're going to come up here to path union notice that little union symbol right there doesn't that kind of remind you of the weld one that keeps everything together so I'm going to move that stuff over there in the box where I'm going to build her Okay, so remember I said I like to start from the top down, so the next thing looks like it might be the strawberries. So I'm going to find a strawberry color. Uh-oh. Do you know why that happened? That happened because I have something selected, and it automatically changed it to that color. Since it's still selected, it will change it to any color I click on. But that's not what I want. I'm going to come up here and hit Undo and Undo. 
So this item is still selected. I don't want it to be. The way you deselect something is just click off of it. Then nothing is selected. And now I can choose the color I want for the strawberries. And nothing happens. I'll come over and get the paint bucket. And then I'm going to hit this strawberry. And again, these are kind of small and hard to see. So I'm going to use that plus sign on my keyboard, get in close, and click these strawberries. Just one at a time. Let's see, is that all? Nope, two more, four more. Okay, so that's all the strawberries, and I believe that's all that I make that color, but let's go with the minus sign so I can see the other one. It looks like maybe I made this heart over here red as well. Can I get that? Yes. Okay. Now notice that the paint bucket is still attached to my cursor. I want to get rid of that. I'm going to come up here and get the arrow. Notice something else though. Something is still selected. See that? I don't want that selected, so I just click off anywhere and watch what happens. It's not selected anymore. So now, once again, I'm going to grab Minnie by the ear and drag her over, which leaves me with the strawberry stuff. I'm going to come down here and just draw a box around it, just like we do in Design Space. And I'm going to come up to Path. And this one that looks like the weld symbol, but it's union, means the same thing. So those are all hooked together now. I can bring those over here because that's where they will go when we build her. All right, following the same thing and moving down, it looks like her face may be next. So I've got to, first thing I have to do is unselect this, right? Because if I leave it selected, and I just go and pick a color for her face um, using this scroll bar. Let's say I use this. <gasps> you see what it does since she was selected? Not what we want. So I've got to come up here to edit and undo. I've got to make it so this is no longer selected with a box around it. Just click out here anywhere. And then I can click the color that I want after I click the color that I want, I can come over to the paint bucket and come back over to her face and color it in. Okay, now you may think that's done, but it's not. And the way I know this is from trial and error. So what you need to do now is hit that plus key on your keyboard and scroll way in and you'll be able to see what's wrong. Look, her lower lip is missing. And this stuff up here by her eyebrows is missing, her face, and the face to the right of her eye. Now she's good. Okay, so once again, I have the paint bucket attached to my mouse, to my cursor. I don't want it. I'm going to come up here and get the selection tool. Notice something is still selected. I don't want that, so I click off anywhere. And then I can click Minnie's ear and move her over. Whoops. And I'm left with just the part of the face that I want. I draw a box around it. And then I say Path Union. And that keeps everything together. And I can just move that over here for now. And again, I'm going to hit that minus key so I can scroll back out and see what's going on. So let's see, I need to do white, the white of her eyes. You may not think so, but you do. So I'm going to do the white of her eyes, the white of her dress, and her gloves. Now I'm not going to make them totally white because they wouldn't show up very well. So I'm going to make them sort of a grayish color and I can, whoa, oh, what did I do wrong? This was still selected when I changed the color. I can't do that. So I got to deselect it by clicking out here. Now I can click the gray. And once again, I'm going to zoom in with that plus arrow on my keyboard and start picking those white things. 
got to get the paint bucket and click in that eyeball and that eyeball. So notice that not everything gets selected all at once. I have to go bit by bit if something is missing. Okay, let's see. In her hand, there, and that. And I think that's it. So notice this is selected. You can see a little selection box, the little marching ants, sometimes they call it. See those little dash lines? That means that's selected. I don't want anything selected. You see how it's still selected? So I click off. And then you can see which tool I have selected, though. I can move Minnie over, move her over a little more, and then I can come down here and select all of this stuff. Notice this works differently than in um, Cricut Design Space. In Cricut Design Space, if we just have a part of an object selected, it selects it. In this program, you have to select, select the whole thing. So, for example, if I go like this, not everything is selected. You see how it doesn't select everything? So you have to make sure everything's within the box that you draw with your mouse. And then you go to um, path, union. And I'm going to hit that minus button again to get this back out and bring the hands over here. Okay, so I did the whites and I've done her face and this and the strawberries. I'm going to do the gray or the silver color of her microphone now. So this is selected. I don't want to do anything yet. I need to deselect it first by clicking off. Then I can click, pick a silver color, come to my paint bucket, and click. All right, so I come up here to the selection, click off, move Mini over, and I can just take this over into the working box where I'll be working over here. Okay, let's see. Now Mini has, we'll do her blue dress now. I can't click the, select the blue yet. This is still highlighted here. i got to click off of it first. Then I can go and find the blue that I want. So I'll just use this one. Click on the color I want to use. Click on the... Hey, I forgot something in the white. Did you notice that? Let me show you in a minute. Click on the, this bucket and click on her dress. Let me go in and make sure I got it all. Nope. Okay, her dress looks pretty good. Okay, so I can come up here to the arrow, click here to select off of everything, move her by the ear, and just grab the blue, and come up here to Path, Union. Now, did you notice what I forgot with the white? Here's the white stuff. Let's see if I can drag it over and you can figure out what I've forgotten. Remember, I just made this, these this color so that we could see them easily. I got the whites of her eye. I got that, got that. Yep, I forgot this part right here. So I can deselect that. What I'll do is I will just change all these to a different color. There we go. So I'm going to get the paint bucket, change that. And that, and that. Uh-oh, I didn't hit it perfectly, so I need to go edit, undo. And that's why sometimes you like to zoom in, too, so you can make sure that the tip of the paint bucket is going exactly where you want it to go. Okay, I'm pretending all of this is white now. And so what I forgot before was down here. All right, did I forget anything else? I think that's it. So now, once again, I'll come up here to the selection tool. Something is selected. I don't want anything selected. Click off. Move her ear over. And there's the new white. And I have it all selected in the box. 
I'm going to come up here to Path and Union. All right, let's go to the minus key again. See, this doesn't. This is really easy. It's just time consuming. So let's see. What do we have yet to do? Let's use the plus key and see a little bit bigger on this one. All right. Let's see. What do we have yet to do? We did our bow. I'm going to start at the top. We did our bow. We did the strawberries. We did her face. We did the white. We didn't do her tongue yet. So we have yet to do her tongue and then the green leaves. So let's do her tongue first. So I have to select off of everything because this is selected over here. Just click. Then I can come down here to the paint bot, the paint bucket and find a red that I like and just make it red. There we go. Come up here and click off and move her, put her little tongue over there. And I said the last thing that we need to do now are the green leaves. So I'm going to use my plus sign and scroll in so I can see them more clearly. Something is selected. Notice the marching ants around here. I don't want anything selected, so I have to click off to deselect. And then I can come down here and pick a green color, any one I want. I can always change that with the vinyl that I use in uh, Cricut Design Space. Okay, I clicked on something, but I don't see that anything happened. So I'm going to try that. I think I need to zoom in a little further. So let's see. Hit that plus button again. And hit this one. Two. These are little teeny tiny things. They're almost kind of useless. This one I'm not sure. Notice how there's a gap right there. Let's see if it fills it. Nope. See that? You see what happens? Since there's a gap right there, it doesn't fill in the way you would want it to. So we can fix that, but that is another lesson and I'm not going to confuse you. So that little strawberry is just not going to have greenery. All right, let's zoom out using the minus key. Looks like I got all of the green that I need to. I'm checking over here. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, so now I'm going to hit this button up here, the arrow, click off, hold her ear, move her over, and there are all the teeny tiny little leaves that I have to get in a box. And I'm going to say Path Union. Okay, the last thing we have to do is the weirdest thing you'll think. So, what you need to do now is you come up here to Path, Break Apart. Path, Break Apart. What I'm doing now is I'm making the black vinyl or the black piece of cardstock onto which we will place the other items. So when I go to break apart, watch what happens. And you're thinking, yeah, what is that mess? Well, those are all each individual cut things. Think back about what you know with Cricut Design Space. If we want something to melt, meld into one thing, what do we do? We hit the weld button. In this program, they don't call it weld. Do you remember what they call it? Yep, there's the same looking button. That was a square and a circle, and they're welded together. So it's union. And then see how it becomes one whole piece? Okay, and now we have mini, and we can build these pieces onto her. Simply by moving them over like this, and you can hit the arrow keys. They work really well in this program on your keyboard to move things just a little bit when you want to. Come the strawberries. If I want to move them a little, use the arrow. And that that's really makes it easier for me. These guys, I'll change white. I will change them to white in Cricut Design Space. And again, I can move them. 
with the arrow. There's our little dress. And the arrow. And the top of her mic. And the arrow keys. Just hitting the arrow keys on my keyboard to move that. And what is this? Oh, her little tongue. Whoops. Uh-oh, I accidentally changed the size of it. What, whatever do I do? Easy. Edit. Undo. And now I'm going to move it over here into place. And use the arrow keys. And of course, I can make this image a lot bigger using that plus key on my keyboard so I can see better. Why don't I do that? The plus, plus key. Click off. These strawberries need to be fixed a little bit. But again, this is just what we're seeing here. It's not what's going to be on our vinyl. Last thing we'll do is we'll bring these leaves over here. And I know the bottom two should fit on those strawberries. Pretty much like that. So then there's one there. And there's one up there. Okay, just so you can see how this is really going to look, I will turn her little gloves white now. You'll be able to see because of the black behind it now. Change it to white, and you can see just how cute she is. I'm not crazy about the pink I changed, tried out, but you know that can be changed easily in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to move that over a little bit and down. Okay, now. The next thing that we have to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and um, go back out with my minus key. And I think that I will go ahead and go to object and group. I'm going to group her together. And I'm going to get rid of this girl over here. I don't need her anymore. So I just click on her and hit delete. And I really don't need this one anymore either. So I'm going to click on it and delete. So now what I need to do is this. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save it as Mini, mini Singing. And I'll name it two since I already have one. Here is one of the most critical things you'll probably forget to do and be really frustrated. You see that right now it says Save As Type Inkscape SVG. That will not will not work in Cricut Design Space. Even though it says SVG, I promise that will not work in Cricut Design Space. You must change this with this drop down arrow to say plain SVG. You do not want it to say Inkscape SVG. You must have it say plain SVG. Click on that. Notice it says now save as type plain SVG and just go to save. I'm remembering mine's mini singing too. All right, and now that's all we have to do with this. Now I'm going to open Cricut Design Space. I already have her here once and I like those colors better, I think. But I'm going to do it again. Upload. I'm going to look for her by going to Upload and Browse. And I'm going to look for Mini Singing 2. Mini Singing 2. Now yours probably won't look like this with a pair of scissors on it. That's because of the pro another program that I have on my computer. But yours will say something about an SVG file. That's what you want. I don't want the GIF that we started with, the GIF or the JPEG. I want the SVG file. Click on that and say open. There it is. And I can put some tags in here if I'd like. Go to save. There she is. Go to insert images. And here she is coming in. And notice she looks pretty much like this one except for a few little different colors. I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to hide her. So let's imagine we are going to make this girl right here. 
we would just go to make it and these would go on to one this would need a bigger map because it looks like it's made it uh, almost 13 inches tall so I need the larger mats for these since I don't have the larger mats I would go to cancel and I would go back to her and I would make her instead of it being 12.5 inches tall I would probably make it 11 point five because our mats can do 11.5 and hit enter and now that should make it so they can all fit on my smaller mats so the white fits the black fits all of these colors fit so that's all you'd have to do now now on mine what I did was I cut this first out of cardstock you can do it out of vinyl you could make this for HTV, for um, you know, a shirt or anything else you wanted. But I did my black first so that I could begin to layer things. Then I came back and did the white and the pink. The red little tiny mouth, her face, the little top part of her microphone the leaves which you can't hardly even see they're so tiny they seem like a waste uh, her dress and all the strawberries so that's it I hope this makes sense to you I hope you try this do mini a couple of times and then go out into the internet and find a really simple 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 clip art so say you wanted to do a unicorn So if I'm going to Unicorn, all I would do is go to Unicorn, then I would type in Images, and then I would come over here to Setting Tools, and after I go to Tools, I'd tell it what type of image I'm looking for. This would not be good, so I would need to tell it what type, and I just want clip art. And usually I come up here to Size, and I want large ones. So then I could click collect any of these. There's a really pretty one. Here it is, and I would right click on it, save picture as unicorn, and then I would do the same thing. I would come down here to Inkscape, file, I'd make a new one, and then I'd go to file and import. I would come to unicorn, leave this box alone comes in really big so I would just hit the minus button so I could get it smaller so I could see and this is when I would now go up here to path trace bitmap there's one two three four five six we'll say six colors so I've got this in here with six scans I'm gonna say okay Now I can X this out and now what I would do is take the top one because that's the one we're going to use I move it over here to the right because that's the one I use the bottom one is the one we're not using and I make it smaller for my reference and I put it over here and then the next thing that I do is I simply come to object ungroup click off of it and then back on and it's going to start bringing things apart one by one. Now that piece looks perfect. Notice the lines. They don't look like they're dashed or missing at all. Okay, that one has a part colored in. I would not want that one. I'll delete it. I'm sure all the rest of these do as well. So I'll delete all of these. And then the next thing I whoops, have to do is simply to come start to color it. So. The first thing I do is make sure there's nothing selected. I'll come down to the color I want, come to the paint bucket, and click. And it's there and there. Okay, come up to this tool. Something selected, I don't want it, click off. Come to the next color I want, click on it, 
click on the paint bucket, click, and click. Okay, come up here to selection. To deselect, click off. I'm going to get the yellowy color, click on it, come to the paint bucket, click the yellowy, and we'll pretend like this is yellow. Okay, the last one's the purple, but first I come up to the arrow, click off to deselect, get the darker purple, and the paint bucket, and paint. And that's all there is to it. The only other thing I can now do is this, is I can move these things off like I had done before. Move all of these parts off. Remember, I put them over here in this working square. Then I can take this guy right here if I want to make a backing. and So I can go to um, Path, Break Apart. Oops, I forgot to select this first. Path, Break Apart. See how that breaks it all apart? And we know how to put it back together with Welding or Union. So then we'll go to Path and Union. And then again, as I said, we could just build this right back on here. Uh, and we're going to take this and we're going to send it to um, our first our file folder and then into Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to take all of this. Actually, I can delete this one first. So delete this guy. Otherwise, <clears throat> our Cricut machine will say we've done something wrong. So I'm going to, I have this guy. And I'm going to come up here to Object and Group. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save him as Unicorn. Okay. Okay, something's wrong here. If you just go to Save right now, you're going to be so frustrated and not know what's going on. What you need to do now you do not save it as an Inkscape SVG. You save it as a plain SVG. Save. And now if we open up Cricut Design Space, move her over, I'm going to upload. Upload an image. Browse. And it was called Unicorn, right? Unicorn SVG, open. There it is. Save. It's a little bit of a mess because I didn't quite finish it all the way, but you'll see how easy this is now. And these are all cut pieces. Isn't that cool? So I would just rearrange these how they're supposed to be according to the picture that we had had. But notice I can't rearrange anything right now. Why? because they're grouped together. I need to ungroup. And then I can rearrange these. So I get rid of these guys because they sure don't go there. This gives you the idea how easy it is to make your own SVG cut files in Inkscape. So once again, I hope this helps. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and share them and comment. I really appreciate it and I appreciate y'all have been using my affiliate links. That has really helped a lot to keep this YouTube channel running. So thank you again. See you again soon. Bye-bye.